Hello, and welcome back to another Imperfect Marketing Brief with me, your host, Kendra Corman. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how to ask ChatGPT the right questions for better content creation. In my last Imperfect Marketing Brief, I briefly talked a little bit about how to use AI for content research and planning. But one of the things that I've noticed is that the people that start to use it for content research and planning don't necessarily always like their results, okay? So what I want to talk to you about is how to ask in smaller bits and pieces to chat GPT so that you can actually get better results, okay? So when you're building content, I always think that editing is easier than creation. Um, it's always been that way, right? And so AI can really help it so that you're not starting with a blank page. So when you're working on a blog post, a podcast script, a show notes, an email, um, what else can it help you with? Commercial scripts, creative briefs, anything that you write, you could really leverage AI and specifically ChatGPT. So first off, you have to ask it the right questions, right? Garbage in, garbage out is what I always say. So the quality of your inputs affect the quality of the outputs. So if you don't know who your target audience is, ChatGPT doesn't know who your target audience is. Now you can brainstorm and work through the target audience with it, but that's a different episode. I want you to think about being specific, okay? And again, breaking it into pieces. So first off, I like to brainstorm, okay? And I take a strange approach. So I'll be like, hey, these are the last 10 episodes that I recorded. I'm looking to create my next 10 imperfect marketing briefs, which are always 15 minutes or less, and they're marketing tips and information brainstorm another 10 or 20. Here are the two or three main themes that I want to cover during throughout these 10 episodes or eight episodes or however many it is that you want it to brainstorm for you. I never take all of them first off and I usually tweak whatever suggestions it gives me. Today's episode was 100% my own idea, right? And But I did ask it to go ahead and outline it for me. And I said, I want you to cover that it's good for brainstorming, outlining, drafting, and scripting, that type of thing. And so that's exactly what it gave me in the outline. Speaking of the outline, that's what you do. So if it gives you an idea like this one, you can say, please outline a podcast script for an episode entitled this. And it will actually outline it for you. It'll tell you things like, you know, an introduction, the power of AI and content, the importance of asking the right questions, the staged approach, tips for each stage, real world examples, and then a conclusion and call to action is literally what it, it outlined for this. And it gave me two to three bullet points inside each based upon the content that I provided it. So it's just so powerful, right? Now, when you get into drafting and scripting, this is the tricky part. And I think that this is a part that people struggle with. And then this is where the disconnect happens and that they're not happy with the result. So first off, if you have it outline your podcast episode, then I would have it go ahead and or outline your blog. I would ha ask it to draft each section of the outline. So again, like I said, there was an introduction, the power of AI content, AI and content creation, the importance of asking the right questions, the stage approach, etc. When outlining the staged approach or the tips for each stage, I would ask it to specifically outline just that section. It's very interesting how different the results that you get. So from the outline script, this section, you will get much better and more thorough content than if you say, okay, script the episode based on the outline. ChatGPT Again, I said this in the last Imperfect Marketing Brief that someone had said is like an intern with unlimited time. 
it's such a powerful thought process to put behind it. Because again, only what you're putting in and the expertise of what you're adding to it is going to really make the difference. Yes, it takes longer to do it step by step like that, but it's a lot shorter than if you were creating it all on your own usually. So I really want you to think about that and break it down piece by piece by piece. And then you can actually add in things like stories or other things things and tips as you go. And it's a lot easier to work and to root cause if you're not getting what you were looking for in each of the pieces. Again, just a huge opportunity. So again, I use the stage approach to leveraging chat GPT. Um, I'll have it brainstorm with me, or if I've already brainstormed, I will give it some ideas. I'll have it work on an outline. Sometimes I tweak the outline and then I will have it script or draft the content in small chunks. I get so much more and so much better content doing it page by page. I was actually just working on an AI script for a presentation that I had earlier this month. And when I was having it outline the presentation, I gave it some guidelines. I told it a couple of the things that I wanted to cover and who my audience was that I was presenting to. And then I had it outline the slides. Then I had it, then I asked it to give me the content and the script for each slide, one by one. I didn't say give me the content for each slide because if I did, it probably would have given me basically the outline with a paragraph. But I wanted more. And it gave me more. It gave me what to put on the slide. And then it gave me a minute's worth of content, which is exactly what I wanted. So again, think and ask for things in small chunks, okay? Because that's what's going to hurt you when you're leveraging AI for your content. So when you are, again, working with ChatGPT, do not be vague. It can get give you generic answers and you don't want to be overly complex. So again, simplify everything for AI. One of my favorite questions to ask AI is, what do you need to know from me before starting this task? It is such a powerful little sentence because it might ask you 10, 20 questions. Or you can say, ask me 10 questions about my business and my target audience so that you understand what I'm doing first before I get you into what you're working on. Again, small thing, so powerful. So again, thank you so much for tuning in to another Imperfect Marketing Brief. I hope that this helps you work a little bit more on your content creation, leveraging AI, and saving yourself time. If you learned something in today's episode, I would really appreciate it if you would rate and subscribe wherever you're listening. It really does help me out and lets me know that you appreciate what I'm working on. Stay tuned for next week's Imperfect Marketing Brief as we head into, can you believe it, the fourth quarter already, where we're going to do a fourth quarter check-in and talk about adjusting your goals. Talk to you later.